Hey guys, I'm John Robinson, the AstroTard. You asked for it, you got it. You guys want to know how to do masks? This is the episode for you. Okay guys, so this week's video is by request. You guys wanted to know how I do masks? Let's go back in time and look at the Lobster Nebula. This is what it looks like when I started. This is what it looks like when it was done. So how do you get from there to there? I'm going to show you right now in PixInsight. Last week, if you watched the video, you saw that I was working on the Lobster Nebula and I quickly went from the SHO, which looks like this, to the final image, which, which looks like this. What I'm going to do this week is kind of show you the masks that I use to tweak this and how to create those masks and then how to use them to go from the image on the left to the image on the right. So this image on the left is uh, just simply mixing SHL sulfur hydrogen oxygen to red, green, and blue. No other tweaking other than stretching those subs. So this is just the raw mix of RGB. And this is after it's tweaked using masks. So here's how you do it. The first step you want to do when you start with your SHO is create a loom mask. It looks like this. And the way you do that in PixInsight is just image extract lightness. This is what I mean by the loom mask. It's a basically a black and white version of your SHO. Okay, and the, the next step what we're going to do is work on the background because it's, uh, it's sort of gray and we kind of want the background to be darker. So we're going to mask this new mask by creating a duplicate, applying that back, and then inverting the mask right there. So now I'm protecting the bright colors, the bright spots, and I'm working on the dark areas. Then I go into histogram trans, bring up my preview, make that a little bit bigger and all I'm doing is moving the curve to the right and you can see what I'm doing basically darkening the background without uh, some touching so much or protecting I guess the white colors the, the bright spots apply that with the square button close this close the preview invert this back come back to histogram trans and now brighten up the white spots going in the opposite direction Okay, just like that. That's the first step. What we've done here now is, is created, and I don't need this duplicate mask. I can throw it away now. Okay, now we've created a nebula mask, or I guess you'd say a, a loom mask from the R RGB SHO. Let's remind ourselves where we started. Here's what we've created. And you can see we've kind of darkened the background. The next thing we're going to do is remove the stars from here. So um, we're going to put this over here and sort of organize it this way. And we're going to create a duplicate of this by simply copying and dragging this down. And then we're going to rename this to be Nebula. Now I already have a Neb, so I'll make use capital letters so I don't, so I can differentiate. So this is a Nebula mask and I'll move it to, this is where I want it to be. Uh, it's going to be a Nebula mask after I move the stars. So I use the star remover tool which is basically available as a third-party plugin under process ETC Starnet. And uh, I don't change any of the defaults, that's just what I'm using. We'll go ahead and apply that. Now on a slow computer, you know, this can take, depending on the resolution, you know, five minutes to run. On my computer, I don't know, it's about 60 seconds or so. I don't think I can stall long enough for it to finish, so we'll probably pause the video here, fast forward to see the result. Okay, that was about two minutes on my computer. Uh, you, and it was about a 70% uh, CPU consumption while I did that. Anyway, so this is, uh, this is what it looks like after you remove the stars, okay? What I'm gonna do now is, is grab the stars from that. The way I do that is I take this uh, SHO loom file that we created, I invert it. And now I've got two files, SHO loom inverted and nebula. And if I go into pixel math and just use the uh, 
RGBK expression, black and white, if I say neb plus SHO underscore loom, which is now inverted, this will pull out the stars. So here's the stars that happen to be inverted. So you invert it, and uh, here you go. We're going to call that stars. Okay, you, maybe you guys know the trick, maybe you didn't. And I'm going to undo this because I, I want to use that later. Okay, you guys see what we did there? So we pulled out the nebula and we pulled out the stars. Okay, so let's put the stars over here. The next step, now that I pulled out those stars, is to make the nebula even darker. Or the background, that is. So I create a copy of it, a clone of it, apply it back to itself, invert it to protect the white areas, and come again into uh, histogram trans, and darken it once more. So it's a sort of a dark charcoal-y color there. Just like that. Close that, reverse the invert, clear that, open the preview again, and we're going to now brighten the white areas. Okay, that's our nebula mask right there. And it has a nice beautiful back uh, background to it. We don't need the clone anymore. Get rid of that. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and add our stars back into it. So let's remind ourselves, there's the nebula, here's the stars. Let's just add those two back together now. So back into pixel math. RGB expression, we'll say nebula plus stars. And now this becomes our new loom channel. Now when you do this, you need to be sure to remember, let's call this our new loom channel. You need to be sure to remember to change the color space because when you go through pixel math, it creates an RGB black and white. We want a true grayscale black and white. So I convert that back to grayscale. There's my new loom mask. Okay. Now I'm going to use that loom mask so I'm going to put it down here. And the other thing I'm going to use is this nebula mask. So from the nebula here, I'm going to go and open the range select tool. And I really want to be mindful of this super bright area in here. So I'm going to adjust the upper limit downward. You can see the impact that that has. It's making it darker in the center there. So this is the default. And I'm going to bring that in slightly because I don't, anywhere it's really bright, I don't want to work on it. So changing the upper limit will make sure I don't get the super bright areas. Click that. And uh, that's not so good. Let's get rid of some of that back. I think it was 18 or 20 we used last time. Try it again. Yeah, okay, that's better. This is our good starting point. Now again, back into pixel math to remove 1,000 times the stars. Pixel math. Range mask. minus 1000 times stars. What I'm really doing is creating little holes where the stars are. And the reason that I multiplied pixel math by a thousand was I wanted to take care of all the gradients of a star. Usually the star is very bright in the center and goes dim as it goes out. By multiplying it by a thousand, I just basically make the star extremely bright and it's gonna subtract 100% you know, of that star radius out of this mask here. And the reason I do that is now I have a very nice mask that is only going to touch the nebula and is not going to touch the background or the stars. So that those holes in there kind of help me do that. And this one is going to be our mask. See what I did there? So I took out that super bright area there and then I've also removed all the stars. All right, so this is our mask to go ahead and tweak the nebula. Okay, so the loom channel mask and the mask with the holes in it, these are the real uh, ones that uh, I'm gonna use now against that image. So all the work that we've done so far is to create two masks. One that looks like this, and one that looks like that. Okay, so now we're gonna use these two masks on SHO. So we bring up SHO. Let's start with the loom mask. 
apply that one. And I'm going to invert it so that I'm protecting the nebula and the stars. And I'm going to go into histogram trans, darken it, pull it down, just like that. Close that, clear that out, invert this back, open the preview again, and now I'm protecting the background and I'm going to brighten the stars in the nebula. So I'm sort of repeating the th same thing that we did on the mask. Now I'm actually applying it to um, the RGB file itself. Okay, that's good. The other thing I'm going to do now that I have this mask applied, and let's remind ourselves, right now the mask is protecting the background and working on the bright parts. I'm going to invert it again. Now I want to protect the bright parts, the stars and the nebula, and just work on the dark. So if you're going to turn the mask off for a minute, it's a little bit noisy. What I'm going to do now is work on the noise. Okay. So now that I'm protecting the bright parts, I'm going to use ACDNR. Just drag that over to work on the background. And this will have the effect of sort of smoothing out the noise on the background there. Okay, and if I turn off the preview of the mask, you can kind of see what's going on in here. This is the after, here's the before. Before, after, before, after. You can see the background there is re we're, we're reducing some of the noise. We're going to take a step further on this. Again, protecting the nebula and stars. Now I'm going to use the multi-scale linear trans. This is the default setting for that. I didn't change anything in here. This is what just comes up when you launch it multi-scale linear trans on the background to smooth it even further. And let's have a quick look to see the result of that. Okay, so I'll move the preview there. Okay, this is the after. Here's the before. Here's the after. Here's the before. Here's the after. It's subtle. Here's the before. Here's the after. You can see what we're doing to the background there. We're just getting rid of some of that noise in there. Here, you can see I've got some... Uh, asteroids that I need to go in and clean up. For this demonstration, I'm not going to do that. But you know, you guys know how to use Clone Stamp for that. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, I'm really done with the loom mask. So let's go ahead and remove it from here. Okay, so now we've done this one. We've darkened the background already, and we've done some denoising on the background. Now let's go ahead and apply the mask with the holes in it, the star holes, here. Turn on the preview so we can see it. Okay, right now I'm protecting the background and I'm working on the nebula. Uh, I'm, also, I'm also protecting the stars since if you remember from this mask, there are no stars in it. So I'm protecting the background and the stars and just working on the nebula. This is where the magic happens here. This is the first thing I will do is do an unsharp mask to it. Let's just check the before and after. Let's see, usually on the Nsharp mask, I like to go maybe 3.4. Here's the after, there's the before. Yeah, that's good. So I use a 3.4 setting on that one. Close that preview. With the mask still applied, now I'm going to use local histogram equalization. Put my preview on that, and usually I like to turn it up to around 122 or so. Here's the before, here's the after. It has the effect of just sort of brightening some of these areas in here. So let's go ahead and accept the 122 setting. Okay, there we go. So far so good, are you guys with me? All right, let me turn off that preview. So what have we done so far? We've darkened the background. We've taken out the noise of the background with ACDNR and multi-scale linear trans. And we've done a sharpen and a local histogram equalization on the nebula. All right, the last step is my favorite, which is curve transformation. Using that same mask, protecting the background and the stars, only working on the nebula. This is what it looks like. So we're just going to start with the saturation and push that up. And then start with the C, I can't remember what C stands for, uh, and just push that up. This is where the magic happens. And you see what's happening. I'm not affecting the background, the stars, or even that bright area, just affecting the nebula. 
Yeah, and maybe I'm also going to tweak the red and green CIEA component. So I put an anchor in the center and maybe pull that down slightly to get a little bit more red out of it. Maybe push this one up slightly. And maybe we'll also do the brightness, the luminosity, just kind of brighten that up a little bit. Okay, there you go. That's it. That's pretty much what I did on that to produce this image. So let's get rid of the mask. And let's look at the before and after. So this is what we started with. So this was our starting point for SHO, and here's where we ended up with. That's it. Using masks, clean up the noise, and uh, darken the background, sharpen the nebulosity, and uh, brighten the nebulosity with local histogram, and then push the saturation for the SHO to really come through. That's it. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was interesting. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Mickey Mouse, Shelby Cobra. <laughs>